Reportedly, the US Air Force held a war game last fall, which resulted in the US losing, badly. Then, during the first meeting between the US and China under the Biden administration, the director of the Central Foreign Affairs Commission of the Chinese Communist Party said the US cannot, quote, speak to China from a position of strength. And last year, China officially surpassed the US and now operates the largest navy. So has the US finally now lost its position as having the world's most powerful military? But before we get into that, our sponsor, NordVPN. There's a million reasons to get a VPN, and you've probably heard it a million times. With everyone staying home more, meaning much more time online, that fact is more true than ever. Your identity, your credit card information, your browsing history, and much more can and is regularly stolen without you ever knowing it until it's too late. All you can do is be preemptive and defend yourself before it happens. And to help do that, you not only need a VPN, but the best, and that's NordVPN. They have over 5,500 servers in 59 countries that you can connect to. They allow peer-to-peer -peer sharing, unlimited bandwidth, double data encryption, up to six simultaneous connections from six different devices, and much more. They also won last year's Best VPN Award and are always highly recommended by the experts. So the only real issue becomes price, right? Well, with my link in the description, you get a huge discount plus an additional month for free. Go to nordvpn.com covert and use our coupon code covert at checkout. Also, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not happy, you simply get your money back, no problem. Again, NordVPN. So, going back to those statements, you can argue the other side, or even just that they're taken out of context. The war game that took place assumed that China used biological weapons, and the full results of that war game are classified. The statement made during the meeting was mostly in context of economic and Chinese domestic issues, and having the largest navy doesn't necessarily make it the strongest. And, of course, the media tends towards sensationalism, as it attracts a larger audience, which makes them more money. But you can't ignore the general trend. On our podcast, we had on a former US naval fighter pilot and a Top Gun instructor. He actually has his own podcast as well, called the Fighter Pilot Podcast, that I highly recommend. But when he joined the Navy back in the 1990s, he said people's opinion of the Chinese military might be, oh look, how cute. But he said that has changed drastically in the last couple decades. And that's true. China now operates two aircraft carriers and quickly building more. They have their own domestically made stealth fighter and now advanced destroyers that, at least on paper, rival that of the US. But beyond just having new, advanced weaponry is the sheer number of them that they're building. Right now alone, they are in the middle of building 18 new destroyers. The US, on the other hand, is working on six. And this trend has become more and more apparent over the last couple decades. The US has less aircraft carriers, less cruisers, zero frigates, less submarines, and less amphibious and auxiliary ships than they did 20 years ago. Making the problem worse is that the US forces are spread across the world. They have forces in Europe to deter Russia, across the Middle East to deter Iran, some in Africa fighting the war on terror, and then the Pacific. The growth of Chinese military power makes it no surprise that the US has been shifting its focus and forces to the Pacific in an attempt to maintain their rapidly decreasing edge over China. However, they currently have a geographical advantage here. The US still operates many overseas bases throughout the Pacific, many of which are left over and date back to World War II. There are also allies with many countries surrounding and boxing in China, like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and to a lesser extent, but who are still not on friendly terms with China, the Philippines and Vietnam. These form a barrier for China, blocking them from access out into the Pacific and therefore the rest of the world. Both the US and China have been attempting to increase their standings with these countries in order to gain an advantage over the other. And when we look back at the last Cold War, it was almost exclusively fought over allies. Whether it was Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Cuba, and many more Central and South American and African countries. A major potential ally of the US against China in the future could become India. It's the second largest in the world in terms of population, a growing military power armed with nuclear weapons, it shares a border with China, and is strongly against China. Whether the US and India become allies or not, it is yet another problem for China with its neighbors. One reason China grew so quickly was the low cost of living compared to the rest of the world. It made all their exports that much more valuable. A small, few dollar profit margin on an item might not have been worth it for more developed countries, but for China, it was more than enough for their people to live off. They quickly became the world's largest exporter, and it brought in a lot of money. But China has changed. The standard of living has increased. Their people now want the latest technology and fashions. This means higher wages, which means higher production costs, and less relative profit from those exports. So that growth has now been slowing down, and appears to be beginning to top off. So how long they can continue growing, and by extension, building up their military, is uncertain. 
China is also going to run into problems maintaining their massive military as it ages. Right now, a lot of it is brand new, but repairing and overhauling is very expensive. The US, for example, will delay midlife overhauls and maintenance schedules when it runs into budgetary problems. It's an issue Russia had with its massive navy it inherited from the Soviet Union. They just could not afford to keep it operational. Many ships ended up sitting, rusting away in port, with many more being scrapped. One thing China lacks though is experience, and experience is extremely important. You could have the most capable, powerful tank, or aircraft, or ship in the world, but if you don't know how to operate and utilize it properly, it's worthless. And with operating new technology comes a steep learning curve. Everything from learning how to integrate it into your forces to simple maintenance and day-to-day -day operations. One example of this is with India's Arihant, their first ballistic missile submarine. Not long after they commissioned it, a hatch was left open by mistake, which then flooded the submarine with corrosive salt water. It took nearly a year and a massive amount of money to repair and replace systems and pipes that were damaged. And such small things, unfortunately, sometimes seem to be needed to learn the hard way, which then leads to the creation of safety measures which are put in place. The 1967 fire of the USS Forrestal aircraft carrier is another example. The incident identified several major issues on firefighting procedures, munition storage methods, and more. And again, unfortunately, it often takes events such as this for issues to be discovered and addressed. There are likely many more problems going on right now that no one knows about, that are just ticking time bombs waiting for an accident. Another not so obvious issue that tends to be only learned through experience is morale. Your plans might be perfect on paper, but there is always a human element that must be considered. The USS Nimitz recently finished its longest deployment of any US aircraft carrier in the last 50 years, 321 days at sea. That has a massive effect on its crew, and things like this often lead to reduced retention rates, with more people choosing not to re-enlist. This then obviously creates problems in the future of not having enough experienced personnel. There's countless more examples of things like this, and there have likely been many problems inside China as well. However, China is typically not as open and doesn't discuss issues like this publicly. Either way, experience is something that China lacks. They have been building up a powerful military, but it hasn't yet been tested. Exercises, drills, and war games can help identify and sort out problems, but nothing can compare to experience gained from real combat. You just can't accurately predict and model every last scenario that could arise. But that is changing. China has recently become more active in the international community in peacekeeping operations and flexing their military strength further and further out into the Pacific. And with their seemingly ever-growing military power, barring some unforeseen event, it won't be long until they finally do surpass the US.